Hello students, welcome to part 5 of the chapter Electrochemistry. So, <clears throat> until now we were discussing about Daniel cell, uh, different type of redox cells, galvanic cells and we have also discussed about electrochemical series. And electrochemical series, using electrochemical series we could find electrode potential or we could assign values for different electrodes. And by assigning different electrodes, we could find the value of different galvanic cells by connecting them. In the electrochemical series, the important point was what we were determining was standard E0 cell or standard electrode potential. So what was the condition for standard? All the species involved in the reaction must have a concentration that is equal to unity. So, if you look into this equation, you can see that concentration of Cu2 plus and Zn2 plus are one molar. But as we know, when the reaction proceeds, concentration varies. Concentration will change from one molar for, for all the species involved in the reaction. So, then it is no more a standard E cell. So, how to determine electrode potential and cell potential if their concentrations are not a unity or if they are not in their standard state. So, this is the question that we are going to face in this, see in this part. Nernst equation formulated by Walter Nernst who is a Nobel laureate or Nobel Prize winner and is a friend of Albert Einstein has put forward an equation called Nernst equation. Using this equation you we can find electrode potential or cell potential at any given concentration. So Nernst equation to determine electrode potential first before going into the cell we will see how to determine the electrode potential using Nernst equation. Let us consider an electrode reaction, a general reaction in which M in its N plus oxidation state is reduced to, reduced to M by accepting N number of electrons. So Nernst equation is given as follows. The current electrode potential is obtained is equal to standard electrode potential from that which is obtained from the electrochemical series minus RT by NF into log R universal gas constant T temperature N number of moles of electrons involved and Faraday which is the charge of one mole of electrons. So you will get the total charge of electrons here RT by NF into natural logarithm into concentration of products it's given here divided by concentration of reactants. So this is the Nernst equation. What you have to do is you have to subtract a factor which we call it as concentration factor from standard electrode potential. This is a fixed value which you will get from an from the electrochemical series. So elect from the electrochemical series you have to subtract a factor that depends upon the concentration or the current concentration. So let us explain various terms involved here. So R is universal gas constant. If you are expressing the value for R in joules then the value is 8.314 joule Kelvin raised to minus 1 mole raised to minus 1. Normally cell, a cell works in room temperature then the temperature will be temperature is considered as 298 Kelvin and Faraday is the charge of one mole of electrons that is 96 500 coulombs and N is the number of moles of electrons so NF will be the total charge of electrons and here it's given natural logarithm natural logarithm at this level it is difficult to determine so it is better to convert it into common logarithm that is 2.303 into log 
if you convert natural logarithm into common logarithm you have to multiply with a factor a constant 2.303 then it will turn up into common logarithm and if the concentration terms here is for pure solid liquid or gases then by default its value is unity because if it is in pure form it contains only that constituent particle so there is no change in the concentration so it's considered as unity whereas if it is an aqueous solution concentration of the species might change in that solution so this has to be mentioned so let's see how the electrode reaction changes after substituting all these values so once if i substitute the values for changing natural logarithm into common logarithm then i have the value 2.303 then rt by nf into log here the m was pure solid so its value has turned into unity substituting the values 2.303 rt by f i am substituting those values 2.303 into 8.314 into 298 it's the r value it's the temperature then f f value which is equal to 0.059 so I am substituting these values E0 of the cell minus 0 0.059 by N. So I have substituted values and I got a constant value at 298 Kelvin and it is always 0 0.059 into log 1 by concentration of the reactants. So these two equations are for you to study and by heart. Let's see a problem by applying this equation. So once again, to find out E cell of an electrode or E electrode, it electrode potential of an electrode at a particular concentration, you have to subtract a factor that depends on that concentration from its E0 from the electrochemical series. Let's look at an example. So the question is calculate the potential of hydrogen electrode in contact with a solution whose pH is 10. So we have seen hydrogen electrode before which was in standard state its name was Sheem and we have to calculate its potential the information given here is the solutions pH is 10. So first we will see what is pH pH is negative H plus ion concentration log of negative H plus ion concentration pH is equal to negative log H plus ion concentration and pH is equal to 10 so we can equate it like this 10 is equal to minus log H plus ion concentration I am taking minus minus to this part so it will be log H plus ion concentration is equal to minus 10 now I am raising to find out H plus ion concentration I am raising both sides to the power of 10 like this so I have raised this side to the power of 10 then equally I have to raise the right hand side also to the power of 10 so it is 10 raised to log h plus ion concentration is equal to 10 raised to minus 10 now in <coughs> logarithm there is a rule the rule is like this 10 raised to log x is equal to x that means this 10 and log will cancel out and the value will be 10 we have here 10 raised to log h plus ion concentration that means 10 and log will cancel out and we will get applying the rule we get h plus ion concentration is equal to 10 raised to minus 10 molar so we have applied that rule that means we get by applying that rule we get the h plus ion concentration that is 10 is, is that is equal to 10 raised to minus 10 molar now what's what's the electrode reaction happening in hydrogen electrode it is h plus ion concentration plus electron electron giving half h2 but in uh, electrochemical series we have learned it like this 2 h plus plus electron giving H2 but here we have to apply this formula because they have asked specifically if they have given specifically the H plus ion concentration that is concentration of H plus ion so we are applying this formula in this equation there is only one H plus ion and which is equivalent to one mole of electron that is equal to half H2 so in order to find out electrode potential they have asked for potential electrode potential which is not in a standard state which is the formula we have to apply yes Nernst equation 
So Nernst equation is the electrode potential of an electrode is equal to standard electrode potential minus 0 0.059 divided by n. How did I get this value? By substituting all those values for uh, or ca simplifying all those values that is 2.303 into R into T divided by F. So please refer to the previous slide to see how I got this value 0 0.059 divided by n here n is equal to 1 into log concentration of products since it is a gas its value is 1 divided by concentration of reactants that is H plus ion concentration which is obtained as 10 raised to minus 10. So I am substituting the value for n and value of H plus ion concentration here in this equation so I get EH is equal to from the electrochemical series value of hydro she is 0 0 minus 0 0.059 divided by 1 into log 1 by 10 raised to minus 10. So <coughs> so I can say that this value is minus 0 0.059 into log 10 raised to my 10 raised to 10. So once when it moves to the numerator, it loses its negative sign, then it is 10 raised to 10. Now, we have another rule here in logarithm. Rule is 10 uh, log of x raised to y is equal to y log x. Log of x raised to y is equal to y log x. In our problem, it is 10 raised to 10. Both x and y are the same. But still that rule applies. When, it, when you apply this, it will be like log 10 raised to 10 is equal to 10 log 10. Let's see. So applying we get minus 0 0.5 into 10 log 10. And again next is value of log 10 which you have to by heart is 1. Log 10 is always equal to 1. That means the entire thing 10 into 1 will be equal to 10 itself. So 10 into minus 0 0.059 means it is 0 0.59 volt. So I hope you got this problem. If you haven't, please move back and try to listen again. We'll go to the next slide. We have seen how to calculate electrode potential of an electrode. Now Nernst gives the equation to find the electrode potential or potential of a cell. Not electrode potential, potential of a cell, E cell. Let's consider a reaction. A general reaction where reactants A and B with their stoichiometric as given here gives products C and D with their stoichiometric as given here. How to calculate E cell? It's very similar to one that we calculated in the case of electrodes. E cell is equal to, first we have to find out the E0 cell. E0 cell can be find out, found out by uh, using electrochemical series. Then you have to subtract the concentration term from it. So what was the concentration term? 2.303 RT by NF into log concentration of products. So while doing this, you have to raise the each concentrations of the reactants into their power of stoichiometry. So C raised to C, concentration of D raised to D divided by concentration of reactants. So we have seen such an equation before yes in the chapter of chemical equilibrium so what does this ratio of product to reactants means it is reaction quotient so concentration of products divided by concentration of reactants was a ratio and that ratio is called reaction quotient so this reaction quotient can give you a lot of information at that reaction is in which stage how is it proceeding all these things we have learned in chemical equilibrium so for now we should know that it is the concentration of products divided by concentration of reactants and it's called a reaction quotient and again by substituting the values for this that is 2.303 which, which i got from by converting natural logarithm into common logarithm so 2.303 into R value was 8.314 temperature since nothing is given here regarding temperature so by default it's room temperature that is 298 Kelvin and Faraday which is 96 500 coulombs so I'm substituting for this I will get the value as 0 0.059 which have all we have already seen in both 
previous slides so then the value becomes e cell is equal to e0 cell minus 0 0.059 divided by n n is the number of electrons involved in this redox reaction into log q what is q q is reaction quotient so e0 cell can be determined if the data about electrochemical series is known or provided and n if we know the number of electrons in the redox reaction you can get the value of n and log q represents if you know the equation you can find out balanced equation you can find out the value of q let's see an example <coughs> here there is a reaction between silver electrode and copper electrode so silver as we know from the electrochemical series having higher electrode potential functions as cathode and this as anode they are not in their standard state so how to determine nernst has provided an equation where e cell is equal to e0 cell minus all those things like in the previous slide log concentration of products what are the what, which are the products co2 plus into ag raised to 2 because stoichiometry is 2 divided by concentration of ag raised to 2 against stoichiometry stoichiometry is 2 into cu so reactant con sorry product concentration divided by reactant concentration so i am substituting this value for this that is 0 0.059 and we know that for metals value is 1 concentration value is 1 so i am substituting all and also e0 cell e0 cell from electrochemical series it is the the e0 value of silver electrode is 0 0.8 and that of copper is 0, my, uh, 0 0.34 so cathode minus anode will give the e0 cell that is 0 0.46 volt substituting all these values into this equation we get e cell is equal to 0 0.46 volt minus 0 0.059 divided by 2 into log concentration of the product divided by concentration of reactant this has disappeared because it's you its concentration is unity so you don't have to write it here so if we know the concentration of cu2 plus and ag plus in the solution at a at particular moment then you can calculate e cell of that battery or that cell galvanic cell at that particular moment okay let's see a real life example calculate emf of a cell at 25 degrees centigrade so the cell is functioning at a room temperature then the cell is given here notation that is chromium to cr3 plus which is oxidation so it is the anode and cr3 plus is having concentration of 0 0.1 molar so it is not in standard state salt bridge then fe2 plus which is the oxidized form and getting reduced to fe that is this is the cathode and its concentration is 0 0.01 molar and it is given that their standard electrode chemical potentials are for chromium it is minus 0 0.74 volt and for iron it is minus 0 0.44 volt so iron is higher and hence it is the cathode so the reactions in at anode is chromium oxidizing giving out three electrons and iron reducing taking two electrons so we have to equate these electrons because they are not the same how to equate it just cross multiply it so multiply the first equation on the anode with two and cathode with three so you're co cross multiplying the number of electrons each other so that they will be equal so in both cases it will be six electrons now net reaction if you multiply this with two we'll get 2 cr for multiplying with 3 then 3 fe2 plus then this with 2 then 2 cr3 plus and this with f3 that is 3 fe now to calculate emf emf means e cell we have we can use the nernst equation nernst equation is e cell equal to e0 cell minus i have all those equations concentration of products that is cr3 plus raised to 2 its stoichiometry this we will not take because it's already a metal and its concentration is unity divided by concentration of fe2 plus raised to 3 fe2 plus its stoichiometry that is raised to its power 3 and they have provided values to find e0 cell 
we know all these values how much electrons are involved here there are six electrons if you multiply you will see that six electrons are involved so n's values we will see one by one e0 cell is equal to minus then minus of minus then by by adding this we will get 0 0.3 volt then substituting values you will get 0 0.059 might be familiar now and number of electrons involved is 6 substituting all these values into the equation we will get E cell is equal to E0 value cell value 0 0.3 0 0.5 by 6 log 0 0.1 this is in the equation given here chromium concentration 0 0.1 raised to 2 Fe2 plus concentration is given in the question that is 0 0.01 raised to 3. So 0 0.1 means 10 raised to minus 1. So it is 10 raised to minus 1 and this is 10 raised to minus 2. And if you <coughs> solve this it will be 0 0.0098. So let's see this is 10 raised to minus 2 and this is 10 raised to minus 6 if you are solving it. 10 raised to minus 2 and 10 raised to minus 6. If we go up, then it will be numerator, it will be 10 raised to plus 6. 10 raised to plus 6 and 10 raised to minus 2 is 10 raised to 4. So have the values here. Then <coughs> 0 0.3 minus 9 into we are applying <coughs> a rule in logarithm which we had applied uh, applied in previous slides. So it is log x raised to y is equal to y log x. Log 10 raised to 4 is equal to 4 log 10. 4 log 10. And log 10 is equal to 1 that means the value is equal to 4 so 4 into this value is equal to 0 0.0392 into log 1 that is the log 10 is equal to 1 that is 0 0.3 is equal to 0 0.0392 which is equal to 0 0.2608 volt so the basic thing is you can see that E0 cell was 0 0.3 as the concentration decreased its voltage also decreased E cell decreased so E0 cell when its concentration was diminished to 0 0.1 in the case of chromium and 0 0.01 in the case of Fe2 plus its voltage has also gone down that is 0 0.26 so voltage heavily depends on the concentration of the reacting species again one more question E0 cell is equal to 1.0 calculate the EM of the cell Again, the concentrations are given. I am making it fast now. E cell is equal to E0 cell and concentration of Ni2 plus by concentration of reactants that is Ag raised to 2. Now, substituting the values we get 1.05 minus. I have substituted the values for as 0 0.059 divided by number of electrons. Is here is 2, 2 into log. Substituting the values for the constant 0 0.16 divided by 0 0.002 whole rest to 2 which is equal to 1 point again solve this the log you can write 0 0.16 as 16 into 10 raised to minus 2 and you can write 2 as 2 into 10 raised to minus 3 raised to 2 so this means that it is 4 into 10 raised to minus 6 we are sub solving this you will get 2 square is 4 10 raised to minus 3 square is 10 raised to minus 6 so it will be like this 16 into 10 raised to minus 2 into 4 into 10 raised to minus 6 4 by uh, 16 by 4 is equal to 4 and 10 raised to minus 6 if, you, if it goes up 10 raised to 6 and it will be 10 raised to 4 10 raised to 6 10 raised to minus 2 will be 10 raised to 4 so it will be log 4 now we have a rule here again log x into y is equal to log x plus log y so log 4 into 10 raised to 4 is equal to log 4 plus log 10 raised to 4 like this e0 cell e cell is equal to 1.05 minus all these values and log 4 plus 4 log so x raised to y is equal to y log x so it is 4 log 10 and log 10 is equal to 1 what is the value of log 4 log 4 is equal to 0 0.6020 how to get it this value for log 2 you have to buy heart it log 2 is 0.3010 so log 4 you can write also write log 4 as log 2 raised to 2 then it is equal to 2 log 2 2 log 2 is equal to 2 into log 2 value you have to buy heart that is 0 0.3010 which is equal to 0 0.6020 or if you want to learn how to uh, use logarithm table uh, we will provide it in our website gnjlearning.com you have to refer it
or if you know lo, lo, if you know by itself you can look for log 4 directly instead of going to log 2 so if you don't know then learn the value log 2 then you will know it is 0 0.3010 into 2 that is equal to 0 0.6020 so we have this after that if you solve it it will be like this and you will get the value 0 0.9122 we strongly recommend you to do this at least once more will be fine but at least once now let's see another term coming up consider the reaction where silver is reacting with copper and we have just seen how to find out how to apply this into a Nernst equation E cell is equal to E0 cell minus this factor into log concentration of products divided by concentration of reactants now I called this term as concentration factor if everything is in unity then the concentration factor will be equal to zero <coughs> everything is unity but as reaction proceeds as this reaction proceeds concentration factor starts increasing so this concentration factor increases as the reaction proceeds concentration factor increases what happens then <coughs> this value has to be subtracted from e0 cell then as a result e0 cell start decreasing so when the cell was in standard state e0 cell minus 0 then you will get e0 cell itself but but when the reaction proceeds cu2 plus increases because it's a product and ag plus decreases and what happens this factor starts rising when this starter factor start raising the entire factor starts raising that is concentration factor increases again when the reaction proceeds cu2 plus increase because it is product and ag2 plus ag plus decreases because it is reactant and as a result this factor start raising or increasing as a result the entire concentration factor starts increasing because the entire concentration factor depends only on these two variables others are all constants so when they increase concentration factor increases so as the reaction proceed concentration factor increases and thus e cell decreases because it is getting the increasing value is getting subtracted from e0 cell so the value decreases what happens <coughs> when once when both these value become equal so now when concentration factor equals e0 cell so this value increases and increases and once it will reach a value which is equal to e0 cell a x minus x is equal to 0 yes then e cell will be equal to 0 if you subtract a value from the same value you will get 0 volt that is cell is in equilibrium there is no current flowing through the cell even if there is something it is equally flowing in the opposite direction that that's what we call it as cell is in equilibrium so at equilibrium we can say that e cell is equal to zero e zero cell will, will never change e zero is a reference value assuming that the, the the cell concentration is one molar if that is the case e zero value will be there e zero cell cell minus our this factor then we can bring we can bring the entire concentration factor to the left then e0 cell is equal to 2.303 rt by nf into log kc what is kc kc is equilibrium constant so you might have learned this in class 11 chapter kc is concentration of products divided by concentration of reactants concentration of products divided by concentration of reactants when the cell when the reaction is in equilibrium so we can substitute for this value as kc because the reaction is in equilibrium at the moment if you're substituting the values you will get e0 cell is equal to 0 0.059 by n into log kc you have to study both these th values <coughs> now this is the relationship between e0 cell and equilibrium constant the real relationship we will discuss after a couple of slides 
so one thing is clear if you know the e0 cell you can calculate reaction equilibrium constant this is one way to determine equilibrium constant determining kc directly from a reaction is <coughs> very difficult so you can easily determine kc once if you know e0 cell and other constants so these two equations you must learn <coughs> Another factor that depends on E0 cell is Gibbs free energy. What was Gibbs free energy? Gibbs free energy is the free energy obtained from a spontaneous reaction that can be used to do useful work. So once when you conduct a spontaneous reaction, that reaction will give out energy. That energy is called Gibbs free energy. The entire Gibbs free energy can be used to do useful work or in other words the energy that is obtaining from a reaction that can be used entirely for doing work is called Gibbs free energy. So from a reaction energy will come out and from that energy certain amount of energy I can use to do useful work and that energy is called Gibbs free energy. I can also calculate Gibbs free energy from E cell. Let's see how. So, as we know, Gibbs free energy is the energy that can be used to do work. So, I can equate it like this. Minus delta G of a reaction is equal to work. Why minus? Because in spontaneous reaction, a reaction loses that energy. So, by general concept, it is believed that the system is losing and hence the value negative. That negative value can be used by some other external system to do some sort of work. So work is equal to the energy lost by the system that is negative delta G of a reaction. But one thing we have learned in physics is that work done can be also obtained by multiplying charge into potential difference. If there are two points having difference in the potential then automatically charge will flow between these two points if they are connected. Potential difference into the flow of charge will give work done. So work done is equal to charge into potential difference. If you are taking a cell, what is the charge that is flowing? That is N into F and what is the potential difference? It is E cell. So work done can be written as Nf into E cell. Nf is the number of electrons into their charge. Number of moles of electrons into their charge. The charge of, if you are multiplying with charge of one mole of electron into number of moles, you will get the total charge that is flowing into potential difference. Potential difference is E cell. That is work done. Now we have delta G of a reaction, minus delta G of a reaction is equal to work. And we have work here is equal to Nf into, so we can equate be between this minus delta G of a reaction and Nf is cell we get. Minus delta G of a reaction is equal to Nf into E cell. Or of a reaction is equal to minus, delta G of a reaction is equal to minus Nf E cell. Now if imagine that the cell is in a standard state, at that state then delta G of a reaction standard Gibbs free energy is equal to minus Nf E0 cell. <coughs> so in the last two slides we saw relationship between E0 e cell, e cell and equilibrium constant Kc. So in the last slide we saw relationship between E0 cell and equilibrium constant Kc. And in this slide, we have seen the relationship between E0 cell and delta G0 or Gibbs free energy, standard Gibbs free energy of a reaction. In the next slide, we are going to see the relationship between Gibbs free energy standard towards Kc. So, so relationship between Gibbs free energy, standard Gibbs free energy and Kc. So we know that delta G0 is equal to minus Nf E0 cell from the previous slide. This equation we have learned from the previous slide. But one thing we know that at equilibrium, 
E0 cell is equal to 2.30 RT by NF into log KC. This is the relationship between E0 cell and KC. So this equation is the relationship between delta G0 and E0 cell and this is the relationship between E0 cell and KC. Now what we are going to do this, this equation connecting E0 cell and KC substituted for the value of E0 cell in this equation. So substituting E0 cell in equation 1 we get delta G0 minus NF instead of E0 cell I am writing this value 2.303 RT by NF into log KC. So both this NF and NF it will be removed and as a result we get delta G0 is equal to 2 minus 2.303 into RT into log KC. This is another equation to study. So we have learned total in four equation. First one was Nernst equation. Second one was the equation connecting E0 cell and KC when the reaction is in equilibrium. Third one was delta G0 is equal to and uh, connecting delta G0 and E0 cell. And the fourth one is connecting delta G0 with KC. <coughs> so let's conclude those equations. First was Nernst equation E0. E cell is equal to E0 cell minus the concentration factor. <coughs> log Q. Q means the reaction quotient. And at equilibrium, we can connect E0 cell with KC. Instead of Q, it is KC. And E cell will be equal to 0 at equilibrium. Then if from this equation we know that now if the value of Kc is greater than 1 if value of Kc is greater than 1 E0 cell will be positive and the reaction is spontaneous. What does this mean? Let's assume that the Kc value is equal to 1. If Kc is 1 then value log 1 log 1 is 0 the entire thing will become 0. If E0 cell is 0 that means the reaction normally won't be spontaneous. If reaction has to be spontaneous then E0 cell well has, value must be more than 0. So if it has to be more than 0 then Kc value must be greater than 1. So if it is greater than 1 there will be some positive value here for the log. Then positive value means the E0 cell value will be higher than 0. That means the E0 cell will be positive and the reaction will be spontaneous. Then the other equation that we learned was the relationship between E0 cell and delta G of a reaction. So delta G of a reaction is equal to minus N of E cell. That's what we learned. Or you can write it like this. Minus delta G of a reaction is equal to N of E cell. Because in this case, if delta G is negative, then the reaction must be. How will be the delta G value be negative? If this has to be negative, then E cell, e cell must have must be a positive value. If this has to be negative, E cell must be positive. If E cell is negative, then the entire thing will be positive, and as a result, delta G will be positive. So, minus N of E cell, where E cell must have a positive value. For positive E cell, delta G0 will be negative. If E cell is positive, then delta G will be negative and the reaction is spontaneous. So for a reaction to be spontaneous, delta G of a reaction must be negative. If it has to be negative, then this value must be positive. Then only delta G value will be equal to a negative value. Okay. Next reaction what we learned is the relationship between Gibbs free energy and Kc. So if delta G value if it has to be negative then Kc value must be above 1. So if Kc value is above 1 delta G will be negative and the reaction is spontaneous. So same is here. If Kc is 1 E0 will be positive and reaction is spontaneous. So and finally we found that so all these relationship are interconnected. Go through this again and again and you will see what type of reactions are spontaneous and what no, what are not. Based on this equation, let's see a problem. Calculate the equilibrium constant for the reaction. So the reaction given here, I hope you remember, it's the reaction of Daniel's cell. And hence, E0 cell is equal to 1.1 volt. Now, <coughs> I 
how to calculate equilibrium constant they have given e0 cell what was the equation connecting e0 cell and equilibrium constant at equilibrium e0 cell is equal to 0.059 by n into log kc so i know the value of e0 cell i know the value of n i have to find out log kc and from that i have to find out kc value so log kc is equal to e0 cell into n divided by 0 0.5 0 0.059 substituting we get 1.1 into 2 divided by so the value will be 37.2881 that is log kc so if i want to kc from this i have to take anti log anti log values will be seen on the hind part of your textbook ncrt textbook or you can get it from uh, various log tables or you may find it in gnglearning.com the table so kc is equal to anti log 37.2881 how to find the value for this anti log from using an anti log table so first if when you see a value like this what you have to see is in the case of anti log go for the anti log table and look to the row that corresponds to first two digit after the decimal point that is 0.28 so in the anti log anti log table row 0.28 is chosen first then see which is the next value 8 and the second value is 1 so in that row choose row number 8 from that table that belongs to row number 0.28 then to that value in column 8 add the value from the second table so that there will be two tables associated with the with this uh, row value 0.28 value from the first table you have to pick the value from 8 column and add this value with the second table will be there just near to that table from that the the value from the first column is added when we add it we will get a value like this value obtained from the table is generally in general tables it will be like 1941 and we when we when you get this value normally the anti table anti log table value is treated as 1.941 because the values of values provided in the anti log table are <coughs> values ranging between 1 and 10 1 and 10 though the value will be given without this decimal place we have to assume that the value is 1.941 then this value into 10 raised to some other value and that some other value is given before the decimal place that is 37 so that's why value 1.941 into 10 raised to 37 so again while looking to the anti log table you have to first look into the <coughs> row that corresponds to the first two decimal places then in the first table that is connected to the row you have to look for the column value in the column 8 then that value must be added from the next table just near to it the value from column 1 from that table so you add this you will get this value and that value will be given without decimal point in some tables so if it is not without decimal point then you have to put a decimal point after immediately after the first digit that is 1.941 into 10 raised to 37 so kc value kc value is 1.941 into 10 raised to 31 next reaction next problem is <coughs> here there is a cell provided reaction is provided whose e0 value is 0 0.236 volt calculate both gibbs free energy and kc value of the cell reaction so they are provided with e0 cell we have to calculate gibbs free energy and kc so either we use this e0 value to calculate kc first or use e0 value to calculate g0 first 
it will be easy if we calculate g0 because the, the, the equation is very short minus n f into e0 cell substituting we get 2 into Faraday's value into 0 0.236 that is e0 cell which will be equal to minus 45,548 joule or we can write as 45.548 kilojoule now to calculate kc so we got gibbs free energy to calculate kc we have an equation e cell is equal to e0 cell is equal to 0 0.59 into n into log kc or you can use the equation that is connecting between delta g0 and kc which we have seen in among the equations that we learned so e0 cell is equal to minus sorry is equal to 0 0.059 by n into log kc and is equal to 2 is equal to substituting the value e0 value we have num n value we have that is equal to log kc so finally we get log kc is equal to 8 then what is kc kc is equal to anti log of 8 or in simple ways if it is a single digit how can we solve this we can solve it like this raise both sides to the power of 10 to 10 raised to log kc is equal to 10 raised to 8 so if you're raising power of 10 no one side we have to do the same on the other side so i raise the power then 10 raised to log will cancel out then kc is equal to 10 raised to 8 now i have the answer so i have calculated gibbs free energy <coughs> and i have calculated <coughs> kc value so here we have the selfie questions ec6 write the Nernst equation for Daniel cell so what you have to do is you have to post the video here read the questions and try to answer in a piece of paper once you complete the answering come back resume the video and evaluate your answers so I'm going to start evaluate the answers write the Nernst equation for Daniel cell so first we have to write the equation <coughs> Nernst equation in, in Daniel cell the, the equation or the chemical reaction is Cu2 plus uh, plus zinc giving Cn2 plus plus Cu so we have now the products and the reactants write the Nernst equation E cell is equal to E0 cell minus 0 0.059 by 2 into log concentration of products divided by concentration of reactants that's the Nernst equation once if the, re the, the concentrations of the reactants and products are given you can substitute the values here and solve it what's the delta g of a reaction in the daniel cell how to calculate gibbs gibbs free energy of the reaction in the daniel cell formula is delta g0 of a reaction is equal to minus nf e0 cell we know the e0 cell of daniel cell is 1.1 volt so just substitute the value minus 2 n f is 96 into 1.1 we will get the value minus 2 <coughs> lakhs 12,300 joule or 212,300 joules or you can write it like this minus 212.3 kilojoule next question calculate the equilibrium constant of the reaction they are provided with E0 cell and number of electrons involved is equal to 2 so what's the equation connecting E0 cell and equilibrium constant that is E0 cell is equal to 0 0.059 by n into log kc n is equal to 2 and E0 cell is given so substitute the value you will get 15.59 how to find out kc you just have to take the anti-log so when taking the anti-log you have to first what we have to do is again I am repeating take the anti-log table and go to the row number 59.59 and in the first table pick the value corresponding to the third column add this value to the second table corresponding to the value from second column and you will get 39 and 19 put the decimal place in the first place so after the first digit so it will be 3.919 into and raise the value this before the decimal place into power of 15 so 10 raised to 15 okay next value of kc for three reactions are given given <coughs> in the first case it was 100 10 raised to 2 in the second case it was 1 and the third case it is 10 raised to minus 12 predict the sign of Gibbs free energy of the reaction 
also mention about their spontaneity so in the first case kc value is positive or greater than 1 not positive greater than 1 if it is greater than 1 then delta g0 will be negative that we have learned already delta g0 will be negative and <coughs> in the second case kc value is equal to 1 in that case it is in equilibrium so from from where did we calculate all these things from the equations we have learned so this is the equation connecting delta g0 and kc so if it is 10 raised to 2 then normally this value will be positive if this value is positive then the the entire value remains negative delta g0 negative means the reaction is spontaneous now what happens if it is kc is 1 if it is 1 log 1 will be equal to 0 the entire thing will become 0 so delta g0 will be g0 will be in 0 that means the reaction is in equilibrium so if, if you comment on the spontaneity you can say that the reaction is in equilibrium so the reaction reaction is in equilibrium now the third one in the case if it is 10 raised to minus 12 so you are substituting 10 raised to minus 12 here then log 10 raised to minus 12 is negative 12 log 10 then the value will become negative then so i am here value will become negative negative of negative will be equal to positive that is delta g will be positive and the reaction will be non-spontaneous okay